I'll be brief so that there will be ample time for discussion with you. Uh, let me say just a, a few words about France's economic situation uh, as part of the euro area, and then about the euro area itself. Uh, this, by the way, uh, I truly believe, is a rather artificial uh, distinction. Stimulating the economy uh, requires action at both national and European levels. Uh, the government uh, I represent uh, makes use of both levels in an economic strategy designed to support a growth agenda. But still, although it is artificial, I will talk about those two dimensions. Uh, first, national dimension. As you said, uh, France is uh, facing impressive challenges and the government is trying to uh, uh, advocate and to face these uh, challenges. Uh, France aims to maintain its position as the world's fifth largest economy. Uh, it is often assumed that France is, um, has a hard time reforming. We discussed that at lunch a few minutes ago. Well, that's only partly true. Uh, and uh, in, in fact, I think it's untrue. What is true is that when France undertakes reforms, uh, it takes care, and especially with uh, a government such as ours, uh, to preserve its traditional source of strength and character, which is a, a social model uh, that cautions the impact of uh, unexpected hardship on people's personal and working lives. A model, uh, to say the world, which emphasizes solidarity. And I'm glad it does. It does not make things simpler, but uh, I think it's the right way to do it. That being said, our government, uh, which has been in charge since last May, just right now, uh, not today, but two days ago, eight months only, uh, is forward-looking. Uh, we have taken first major steps in order to consolidate public finances uh, with a debt which is um, over 1.7 billion euros, debt service at the biggest spending item in our budget, and a deficit that would have neared or even be over 5% of GDP uh, in 2012 if we had not taken corrective measures. Uh, France was clearly on an unsustainable sustainable path, and we need to correct that. In six months, uh, alongside with uh, uh, the ministry working with me, Mr. Kaizak, Minister of Budget, we have passed six budget acts uh, to get our finances back on a, I would say, more virtuous path. The budget for 2012 has brought the deficit down to 4.5% of GDP, and the one for 2013 uh, has targeted a 3% deficit and um, a, an historical reduction equal to two points of GDP. The debt curve um, is expected to reverse in 2014 and the country should achieve a balanced budget uh, by the end of the current term of office, which is in our country 2017. Some people uh, abroad uh, seem to like to depict France as a high tax country. It's not always false. Uh, in fact, however, throughout our mandate, our fiscal consolidation drive will rely more on spending cuts, 60 billion, than on tax increases. I would say something like 50 billion, and we made uh, a, a good way. This return to a balanced budget derives further credence from a constitutional bylaw that is in line with the Treaty on Stability, Coordination, and Governance which we ratified uh, after the uh, election. We have also led the foundations for France's lasting return to competitive strengths with what we call a national pact uh, for growth, competitiveness, and employment, which was unveiled in November, exactly on the 6th of November. The pact encompasses uh, 35 measures uh, for enhancing price and non-price competitiveness cost and non-cost competitiveness. It calls for a, a 20 billion euros reduction in labor costs that was passed at the end of uh, 2012 and which should enable our companies to achieve the margins they need to start hiring 
and investing, because that's what it was all about. In return, we have asked the companies to, to make changes with respect to uh, employee uh, representation. We spoke about social dialogue a few minutes ago, executive pay, among other issues. The pact uh, includes also a major section on financing the economy with the banking sector reform, which I will have to present in our parliament uh, in a few days from now, exactly one month, 15th of February, uh, and also the establishment of a public investment bank in order to help our small and medium-sized uh, firms to, to, to find the financing for their investment. In 2013, I will be uh, devoting as a finance minister a substantial amount of my time to implementing this pact, and I'm conscious that, uh, well, this task is important. Uh, 2013, I spoke about it just one minute ago, will also be a year of major structural reforms in France, to mention just one of them, the one we discussed a few minutes ago. Uh, we will reform uh, the labor market. Uh, a few months ago, President François Hollande and Prime Minister Jean-Marc Ayrault gave labor and uh, management representatives the task of negotiating an agreement in this area. The negotiations uh, were brought to a conclusion uh, last Friday uh, after months of discussion that put industrial relations on a new uh, footing. The resulting agreement um, is both highly important and balanced as it creates job security and also extends new rights to employees while uh, at the same time giving uh, companies greater legal certainty and the flexibility they need to adjust when they face uh, a crisis. We will sign it into law by the end of May, and the will of the government and president is that the uh, parliament will accept to have uh, just a transposition of the agreement into a law. So, uh, as you said, uh, we uh, accomplished all this in just eight months, which is an extremely short, incredibly intense period. As you can see, uh, France has uh, embraced reform and is fighting uh, for growth, for um, uh, employment, while maintaining its strong uh, social policy orientation. And high up on this growth agenda stands Europe, uh, above all the euro area. Uh, France will be unable to return to growth unless the euro area pulls out of the recession. And I consider Europe first and foremost as a vehicle for stimulating the uh, French economy. Two things are, uh, un are linked uh, with a very narrow way. So let's come to Euro and to Europe. I defend a stabilized Euro area with a sound integrity, which can once more stand as a vehicle for economic and social progress for its citizens and uh, for a factor for stability of the world economy as a whole. Uh, when I discussed with uh, Michael Noonan and Brendan Honing this morning, I was struck by the fact that we share this uh, European ambition. Uh, Europe is not uh, only a, a collection of countries uh, with uh, their own national interest. It's also uh, a construction which brings uh, up values, uh, democracy, peace, the capacity to have uh, as well economic efficiency and social justice. And if it's not seen and perceived by the people that way, then it deceives. We are in this very difficult situation with slow growth. And this is why growth uh, is linked to the reconstruction of the European image. Precisely, uh, what is the Euro area situation beginning of this year, 2013, and at the start to this uh, Irish presidency? I believe uh, that we have reasons to be reasonably satisfied. Uh, things are looking up for the Euro area. Uh, uh, I, I was never, uh, never one of those who thought that when a new president comes into office or a new government, we uh, move immediately from the shadow to the light. That was uh, Mr. Jacques Lang under Mitterrand's presidency. <laughs> but still, uh, I think there, there was a change in the air, a change in the mood, and that helped to, uh, to, 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 take, to take a new direction, a new orientation for Europe and the Eurozone. Uh, so the Eurozone uh, and Europe is in a better shape. It is starting 2013 with new instruments and tools 
uh, its stability and integrity are no longer in balance after we found an agreement on Greece or on ban banking supervision. Uh, progresses have been made uh, as well by the European institutions, the Eurogroup, the ECOFIN, uh, the uh, European Central Bank, on, under the very intelligent lead of Mr. Mario Draghi. Uh, and today, I can say that there are no doubts about the future existence of the euro. This is a considerable progress if we just look back uh, only six months ago. Um, I would like here to pay particular tribute to Ireland and its model implementation of the program, despite the toughness uh, and the task uh, fa facing the country. The Commission, the European Central Bank, and the IMF have together conducted eight successive reviews, all with positive conclusions. Uh, rates have uh, fallen sharply, and Ireland has been uh, able to regain partial access to the medium-term markets uh, in a particularly short space of time. Uh, obviously, um, you, you talked talked about the challenges facing us, um, great challenges lie ahead uh, for the Irish government and people. The budget deficit remains large, despite ongoing fiscal consolidation, and the banking sector is still fragile. Uh, the June uh, European Council asked for ways to be thought to strengthen the country's banking system and, and public debt sustainability. Uh, these discussions are underway, but under the good way. Uh, that's what's more important. And um, at this stage, though, uh, I feel I should say how important the Irish government and Irish people's determination is to date uh, to the EU area stabilization uh, process. And um, as I said in a press conference, uh, I really trust that um, Ireland will be, by the end of this year, the first country under program by the IMF and the Euro to get out of these programs due to the efforts which has been made. And we feel very sympathetic about that. We have also reason, naturally, to be satisfied when we consider the financial assistance to expose member states and the consolidation of our instrument. Uh, yet, this is uh, just a start. The euro area is stable now, but it needs to recover. Um, and I, I believe this calls for fresh momentum uh, in the euro area, and I turn with hope uh, to the uh, Irish presidency since I'm sure it will be a good, why not a great presidency. This uh, new momentum, which will necessarily close, call for closer euro area integration, should in the short and medium term work on supporting as well business and growth. Uh, it could be based uh, on four main strands. First, restoring order in the banking and financial sector, which is uh, already well underway with the agreement on uh, integrating banking supervision, although the try should be converted in the first half of 2013, this relies on the Irish presidency. Uh, at the ceremony to mark the beginning of the Irish presidency, your Taoiseach, the Irish prime minister, quoted a Gaelic proverb that I will not even attempt to pronounce. Uh, I know that I brought here French weather, but I cannot translate exactly or pronounce uh, Irish proverbs, uh, but which basically means, uh, as I've been told, a good start is half the work. I share this uh, point of view. Uh, the Irish presidency uh, uh, also has two major pieces of legislation to see through on, on protecting savers deposit and on bank resolution, because banking union is not finished with banking supervision. This is clearly the first and major point that we have got to uh, go through. Second, at the same time, we need to discuss the euro area's economic and fiscal strategy and how to coordinate our economic policies more closely without losing speed with structural reforms. I know that the Irish government is well aware of this issue. The euro area's re economic recovery concerns us all, uh, both deficit countries which need to rapidly reduce their spending and consolidate their accounts, and surplus countries, which can use their room for maneuver to promote investment and support internal demand. It is our common interest. Uh, look at the world around us. The US found a solution between the government and uh, the Congress in order to get out of the fiscal cliff. Uh, that gives uh, room for growth. In Japan, a, a new government is uh, now launching a program of relaunch 
uh, for economy uh, with 150 uh, billion <coughs> euros. It's important. In China, where I was a week ago, uh, I can see that the priority will be on internal demand. So it's not, it's not acceptable that Europe is the only important economic uh, uh, area in the world without growth. We cannot accept that. Third, and in addition, uh, we need to learn lessons from the crisis and examine the euro area's robustness and capacity to handle an economic uh, shock from within. The crisis starkly demonstrated that the euro area did not have the tools uh, it needed to deal with shocks. Uh, we have to consider how we are going to make good this shortcoming. I believe that the euro area should, in the medium term, be underpinned by a real counter-cyclical fiscal strategy, which would finance such areas as social actions uh, through the transfer, for example, uh, of part of the unemployment benefit funds, uh, and competitiveness too, uh, and would uh, act as a, an automatic stabilizer. We need that. Fourth, and lastly, we need a, a serious debate on uh, stepping up democratic control over decisions made in the euro area. Some countries uh, have seen severe social unrest in uh, recent months. <laughs> Others are wondering how best to bring the euro area closer to the citizens of its member states. A number of channels can be uh, considered. They range from embodying uh, euro area governance in the shape of a euro area finance minister, I'm fa favorable to that, to more immediate control by citizens. I believe, in particular, that euro area citizens should be represented in an ad hoc formation in, in the European Parliament, I wouldn't say of the European Parliament, uh, which should be able to act as a true joint legislator alongside the Eurogroup with the principle of no taxation without representation and vice versa, no representation without taxation. Such a, a formation in the European Parliament would also take a hand in the appointment of the Euro area executive. This goal uh, probably uh, lies a little further off on the horizon. It's not for tomorrow. It's not uh, for 2014, 2014. But we've got to consider that when looking at uh, the future. This goal probably lies a little further, as I said, but as Yates would say, in dreams begins responsibility. Here, in a few words, ladies and gentlemen, how the priorities uh, that France has established, uh, uh, both nationally and at uh, the European uh, level, for its uh, own economic recovery and for the sake of the euro area. And here are the ideas that we defend for the future of the euro area. The Irish Prime Minister said at the beginning of January that stability, growth, employment were the priorities of the uh, country's presidency of uh, the Council of the European uh, Union. Uh, France fully shares these goals, 100%, uh, uh, and will stand by Ireland to help to achieve uh, them. That was the sense of my visit today. It's also the sense of the brief speech I delivered, and probably it will be the the sense of the answers I will give to your questions if there are sons. Thank you. Now, thank you.